Hi, and welcome to Ask Kate, brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. I'm Kate, and I am here to answer your questions. This week, I got an email from a father whose two-year-old son had a new diagnosis of NF1. They were still dealing with the news and trying to learn as much as they could. As I always do, I answered as many questions as possible and directed them to our resource library at ctf.org, where you can find many wonderful resources that you can really take your time and read through and get yourself kind of up to speed on what it means for this family to have a little boy with a diagnosis of NF1. This was new for the family. There's no history of NF1. And so we talked a little bit about some of the different things that they may see develop in the next few years. So as I said, this little boy is two years old. And so um, the first thing that they noticed that indicated that something might be going on were the cafe au lait spots. And we've talked about those before. Today, I'm actually gonna focus in on three specific things. Uh, one of the things dad was really wanting to know were what are th things we might see that we should be worried about and maybe what are some things that we're, we might see that we don't need to, to worry or be concerned about? And I thought that was such a smart question and a smart way to think about this. And so today's video is really going to focus in on some things that you may or may not see, but that are not a cause for uh, significant concern uh, in the vast majority of the time. And so we'll talk a little bit through that. So first I said, let's talk about the freckling, right? So we're all, uh, a lot of us are familiar with the fact that children with NF1 and adults as well have certain patterns of freckling that are associated with the diagnosis of NF1. Specifically, it's freckling in the groin uh, as well as in the axillary, so that's in your armpits, so actually in the armpit you'll see freckling. And uh, another one that's less well known is submammary, which is sort of the right below the nipple line, you might see uh, freckling there as well. Um, we in NF1, we're going to see that bilaterally on both sides, and you may see it in all three places. You may see it only one of these places. As we know, NF1 is highly variable. Freckling in and of itself is not a concern. Um, it is not something that's going to cause problems down the road. It's not something that requires any particular treatment. And usually within the first few years of life, we stop seeing the development of new freckles. So that's the first one that is not a big red flag. Uh, another one that we talked a little bit about were the lish nodules. So this is a very big word that basically means freckles in the colored part of your eye. They're not exactly freckles, but they kind of look like it. And it's an easy way to remember what we're talking about when we say lish nodule. Sometimes in um, children who have very light, light green, very light blue eyes, you can actually see these um, kind of light tannish brown spots in that colored part of the eye uh, just with your own eyes. You can, you can just see it. Um, other times uh, for most children, this is something that the ophthalmologist might notice on exam. Again, a yearly visit to the ophthalmologist for young children with NF1 is very important and something that we always recommend to look for things like optic nerve gliomas. Now, the Lish nodules themselves will be, might be noted by the ophthalmologist, but are not indicative of a larger problem or um, indicating you know, any underlying issue. And the third and final thing I wanna talk about is head size, head circumference. This one's a little trickier. So we do notice that children and adults with NF1 tend to have a larger than average head circumference. It's, it's not necessarily something noticeable with the naked eye. It's not that you might look at it a person with NF1 and think, wow, that's a really big head. <laughs> that's unlikely. More it's something that a pediatrician might notice and you'll see in a first year of life uh, that a lot of babies, they get weight, they get how long are they, how big is that head circumference, right? So with children with NF1, we might see that, that they're a little above average. So when you look at those growth charts, they might be up in that 90th or 100th percentile for head circumference. Um, and that's that's something we see. It's not uh, on its own a cause for concern. The one exception here would be that if we see a significant jump in head circumference, then we might want to do some more investigating to make sure things in the brain are still healthy. And so that would be if a child was sort of tracking along at that maybe 70th percentile, and then they go in for their next well visit, and now they're up above 100th percentile. Okay, so maybe we go see a neurologist, we do some investigating, we make sure, like I said, that things are still healthy and looking the way we want them to in that kiddo's brain. But in and of itself, a large head size is not, uh, is not related to any significant health complications for kids and adults with NF1. 
So those are just three quick things that I wanted to talk about today. We could also in this topic include Cafe Olay spots. I did make a video specifically about Cafe Olay spots. We also have a fantastic printable resource in the resource library about Cafe Olay spots. So I won't spend much time on that here except to just say that in and of themselves, those flat, uh, usually kind of coffee with milk colored birthmark spots on the skin in NF1 are not related to any medical complications. They can be frustrating cosmetically, we understand and we do, we know that, but they are not um, going to become something or cause some kind of serious medical issue. So there are, um, I, I really appreciated this dad's question and saying, how can we sort of differentiate, hey, this is something we need to maybe go talk to the doctor and oh, this is something we knew might happen and we don't need to be too worried about it. So hopefully this was helpful to you today. If you have any questions, as always, please leave a comment below, reach out to me at my email. I'm always happy to hear from everyone. Thanks so much and have a great day.